Well, good afternoon all, and thank you for the introduction. Uh, for those that I've not met, my name is Joe Kadravik. I'm the CEO of Cobalt Blue. It's a pleasure to be here today. I very much enjoy sharing views uh, about the Cobalt market and the opportunities within the market, and I uh, also enjoy discussing our company, Cobalt Blue. Um, I'm going to start off with a fairly bold claim right at the front. It's our company's strategy to bring the Thakaringa Cobalt project into development and operation, and when we're in operation, we'll be a top five global cobalt supplier. So another way of putting that is we will be the largest source of cobalt ex-Africa in the world when we come into production. It's a big mine, a long life mine. Let me talk about firstly the opportunities within the market itself. The left hand column you see there uh, shows where batteries have come from. To date, most of the cobalt in the world is, is used in small consumer devices. I've got one in my hand here. I'm sure you've got one in your pockets. Uh, these are small devices, small batteries. Um, they're your laptops, your notebooks, your iPads, and they're growing at very modest rates, uh, GDP-like rates. The market's fully penetrated. It's not that exciting. And as a parent of teenagers, I can tell you the less time my kids spend on screens, the better. So, um, and they're dominated by uh, a cobalt oxide technology. So it's a, it's a, a derivative of cobalt that's uh, geared into that particular market, uh, cobalt oxides. Where we get very excited is the next generation of batteries you see in front of you in, in the middle column. And it's exciting because these are large batteries and they're growing at very large growth rates. There are two styles of end use there. Firstly is thick storage or renewable storage if you like. That's something as simple as a solar battery for your home. Um, that battery there is a hundred times bigger in energy storage terms than the battery in your laptop. And that's nothing compared to utility scale storage that we're seeing in places like South Australia with the Musk battery providing grid stability. So these things are very scalable, very large batteries. Perhaps the most exciting of all opportunity sets is the EV, the electric vehicle set you see there. That battery in that Tesla is a thousand times bigger than the one that's in your laptop. Again, growing at something in the order of 15 to 20% per annum. Kagar. So very large batteries growing at very strong rates and that's why we're excited about the market. If we look at today the cobalt market itself, the best way to describe it to you is the entire cobalt market today is around 100,000 tonnes or just over. For those of you with uh, iron ore experience, um, I'll put it to you this way, I can fit the entire global cobalt market today, the annual market, uh, in less than one cape size bulk carrier. Less than one cape size bulk carrier. And that should give you an idea of the scarcity surrounding the metal. Another way of putting it, and I just placed this out earlier, I think I can fit the entire cobalt metal market into four times the size of this room. Today, at 100,000 tonne, just over half of that is battery focused, and the bulk of that is oxides. They're these, again, these consumer devices growing very slowly. The sulphate market has a large minority in that, but it's really the future that gets us excited about sulphates. Let's fast forward approximately 10 years. The entire market is scheduled to grow, or forecast to grow around 70%. Um, that's an internal number from our strategy team in conjunction with the good people at CRU, and they've helped us define the opportunity set. By far the biggest growth of any of those segments will be cobalt sulphate will be EVs, will be renewable storage, and that's what gets us excited. And that's the opportunity set uh, for Cobalt Blue. Now let's have a look at the Cobalt supply chain, the production chain. And I want to make a point to you that it's a convoluted, high cost chain, which is just begging for a disruptive player like Cobalt Blue to enter. Traditionally, Cobalt has been a byproduct. Uh, you may have heard this said before, but somewhere between 95 to 98 per cent of today's cobalt is a byproduct of either nickel or copper production. Traditionally, mines have sold that byproduct to a refinery chain, and until the, uh, the large growth in lithium ion batteries, most of that was converted into metallurgical purposes, so the metal refinery you see there. With more and more chemical demand, particularly lithium ion batteries, that was then handed over to a chemical refinery to then ultimately make an oxide or a sulphate. But the reason it's 
an anachronism and, and ripe for change is simply this. From a processing point of view, to convert a cobalt cons all the way to a metal, then deconstruct it all the way back to a salt for ultimately uh, selling into the battery industry is like saying, let's go 10 paces forward, eight paces back. It's high cost, it's inefficient, and it's ripe for a new entrant. And that's the focus of cobalt blue. We want to make, at the Thackeringa site, battery-ready cobalt sulphate. And the, the, uh, the uplift for us is significant because rather than getting paid 20 to 30 cents in the dollar for the contained cobalt, which is the relationship a traditional mine has with refineries, we're looking to get paid um, at a premium to the cobalt price, approximately 105%, based on the purity of the cobalt sulphate supply. So what we're doing is disrupting the mine to battery supply chain and putting ourselves into that chain on a permanent basis. And that will help capture significant margin, not just for our company, but also for our shareholders. I'm also glad to tell you in terms of cobalt sulphate, we've made our first commercial product, a battery grade product, and we're now shipping that to potential battery making partners in Asia. So my uh, head of feasibility studies and I have a trip to uh, China, Korea and Japan in March, where we're looking for technical partners to help us with our journey. Let me now switch the focus onto Thakaringa, our flagship project. I started the, this discussion by, by making a bold assertion about our size, and let me just emphasise some points. We believe we have the geological endowment to support a 20 plus year mine life at Thakaringa. To date, we've drilled up about half of that. We believe based on very simple processing and creating an end battery ready product that our cash break even points will support a long life mine. We have put out in the public domain a target of around $12 US a pound as our cash break even for cobalt production. Now that's a significant number because if you look back on the cobalt industry, that's equivalent on an inflation adjusted basis to a one in 40 year drop uh, in the price cycle. And that's an important proposition for us when we go to project financing. The ability to say, here we are of great scale, simple process, low capex, low OPEX. And I think that's going to make us a very compelling proposition uh, when it comes to project financing. Now those of you who have been around the traps will know there are key cost lines in any mining operation. And I think we can all agree that people generally are number one or two on any cost of operation. Our proximity to Broken Hill, some 23 kilometres away, lends itself to a very low cost mine because of the access to people. I don't need to tell you that Broken Hill is an established mine in town with almost 20,000 people, the right numbers, the right skills, the social infrastructure that will not only build and construct, but ult ultimately operate and maintain the mine. Power, you can see a small uh, gold diamond there next to Broken Hill. That's the national electricity market. That's a 220 kV substation. That's the East Coast version of which you guys have here is the, the Swiss market, the, the high voltage transmission grid. That effectively means that Cobalt Blue can participate as a national market participant and our costs for power will be wholesale power costing. Power does all of our heavy lifting in the refinery end of the business. Addition to that is water. You can see a blue rectangle there. That's the Menindi to Broken Hill line. The state government uh, has very helpfully for us commissioned a major pipe upgrade or, or major new pipe between the Murray River and Broken Hill and that'll be in place in late 2018. So there is water available for us. We've touched on the road. The road is the barrier highway. You see there the yellow line. That's the daily commute for our people. It's about a 20 minute commute and that goes all the way between Broken Hill and Adelaide. And the piece de resistance in our logistics um, is the railway line. Now you can't see it because it's hidden by the yellow and blue line but the railway line goes from Broken Hill and then passes through the top of the tenement there. Another way of putting its convenience to us is that there is no point in any of our three deposits that's more than 2,000 metres away from the railway line. From a logistics point of view it's a wonderfully, wonderfully compact um, tenement. The other thing I'll add too is that the ore body itself contains sulphur, we're a sulphide ore body and that lends us a natural cost advantage when we combine co a cobalt into a sulphate product. We're not buying sulphur to make that product, we have it in the ground. We're not buying sulphur or acid as part of our process. 
And that process is something that we've taken a lot of care over. We've actually uh, created a patent around a cobalt extraction process from pyrite because uh, we believe it's a truly remarkable uh, process. And indeed, our neighbours across the border agree with us. We've recently signed a cooperation MOU with Havilar Resources. Havilar have the only jorked cobalt resource in South Australia in, in Mutaru, in the Mutaru deposit. And they're as excited as we are to test whether their ore can be processed as efficiently as we believe it can be in, at Thankaringa under our umbrella. We'll have those test results out to the public by late April. And if they prove up, we're very excited about the prospect of stepping out of our own tenement into a broader cobalt district. To give you some idea of scale, um, Thackeringa has 63 square kilometres of ELs. Uh, we believe this similar mineralisation ex extends to over tens of thousands of square kilometres in our, in our uh, area. So this could be a genuine start of a cobalt district for New South Wales and South Australia. Let me introduce to you the Cobalt Blue team. So as I've uh, introduced myself before, Joe Kadravik, I'm actually an aeronautical engineer of all things, which gives me a material science background. Um, after I left the Air Force, I had eight years with both Rio and um, BHP in open cut logistics. So I got very good at moving millions of tonnes of dirt from there to there. And as glib as that sounds, um, it gave me a very good background in large-scale materials handling and cost optimisation. And that's what Thackering, Thackeringa is. We're a large-scale mine trying to mine something that exists in the ground at 900 ppm, a, a semi-precious metal. Uh, beyond my time at uh, BHP in Rio, I was head of resources at Deutsche Bank, so my background is more a uh, mid to large cap institutional background. Uh, and I'm hoping that background comes in to, to bear some fruit for the company as, as we grow into uh, a small cap and beyond. Um, beyond that, I had eight years as a uh, hedge fund manager in long short hedge fund um, globally, where my focus was on materials, particularly energy storage. So I've got a good 10 year background in energy storage in batteries, understanding the role of lithium ion, and then within lithium ion, the role of cobalt. And I'm very happy to have that discussion offline with you because you often get asked the question, what's, what's the risk to cobalt going forward? Um, and then I was appointed as CEO of, of Cobalt Blue. On my board as well, at, um, amongst others, we have a long-term exploration geo in Trungi Johnson. Trungi has over 20 years experience. He's actually run our exploration program for us. Um, and he has very, he's very well connected in the industry. So not only does he design the program, he manages the program. And last year, I'm very proud to say, we completed well over 20,000 metres of drilling at Thackeringa, which is a sizeable commitment from any junior, and did it successfully. Um, also on the team is Dr Andrew Tong, who's our Head of Feasibility Studies. Uh, Andrew is a PhD in chemistry, and somewhat wonderfully for us, has been writing up extraction of metals from pyrites since his undergraduate days. He, he based his PhD around it, and the last 15 years, he's spent a lot of time extracting gold from pyrites overseas. It's quite a common process, except no one does it in Australia. And he's tailored this process for us to extract cobalt from pyrite. And we believe we've got the basis for a very successful business. Uh, I'll talk about some catalysts now. So in summary, if you think about cobalt blue, think of us as an integrated cobalt refinery. We want to disrupt the current industry and become a battery grade cobalt sulphate supplier of scale. Dare I say it in BHP terminology, we want to prove Thackeringa up to be a tier one global asset. We have a natural advantage of Thackeringa, having both cobalt and sulphur in the ground, which allows us to make a battery ready cobalt sulphate product and also means we don't have to buy acid or sulphur any of those feedstocks. We are the only primary cobalt uh, producer listed on the ASX, indeed one of only two globally. What do I mean by that? It means that the majority of our revenue line is cobalt. 80% of our revenue will be cobalt. We're not a byproduct player, which is the case for most others. And obviously Australia is safe and, and secure jurisdiction. What are the catalysts going forward? I touched on earlier that we've shipped our first cobalt sulphate samples. We're having commercial meetings in March and we expect those to bear fruit uh, for us going forward. We're also um, within a month of uh, releasing a resource upgrade into an indicated status. Uh, we expect that to be in the market in early March. And then by mid-year, 
um, we will release a pre-fees. It's the pre-fees, I believe, that will be the catalyst for major re-rating for our stock because the market will see the true economics of the Thackeringa project. So with that, I thank you for your time and wish you a good afternoon.